Hallelujah. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Sup? Huh? Jesus. Amen. Amen. I uh, oh, I had a bunch of notes. Well, not a bunch. I usually don't take a lot of notes. I usually just write down scriptures and then we just go from there. But I got some things I wrote down. And this morning, the Lord changed all that. The Holy Spirit's got a message for y'all. And I'm just going to obey and deliver it. Now, what I got to say may make you mad. But you can get glad in the same pants you got mad in, right? Now, another thing I want you to know is don't take my word for it. You dig in the word. You find out. Because it becomes real when you find out. Amen? It didn't become real for me until I started digging in. I always took the pastor's word for it. But, you know, he's been doing this 30 years. He ought to know. But then I started digging in and finding out little bits and pieces here and there and found out the Lord really could talk to me. And He talks to me just like I talk to me. Does that make sense? But we got somebody uh, in the hospital that I want, I want you all to pray for. It. Warren's in the hospital. You know Lois and Warren. She called me about 10 o'clock last night and I talked to her right before church and... Uh, uh, we, we just need to lift Warren up. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for what you're doing in Warren's body. Father, we don't see with our eyes, but we see with the eyes of our heart. Faith sees. And we see Warren lifted up, back on his trike again, spreading your love to those who need it. And we thank you for the healing in his body. And we speak to his body because we know his body can hear us. There is no time and space, Father. And we thank you. Now, body, you line up. You've got no right wrecking havoc in Warren's body. And we command every cell, every organ to function the way it was designed. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to share some things with you that the Lord gave me Tuesday in men's prayer. And uh, it's not for the month of January. You ladies are welcome uh, to come along and be a part of that. And, uh, you know, the Lord showed me this, and I didn't tell Chris. I didn't tell Pastor. A part of this, the Lord showed me a while back. Well, I'm just going to get into it. I was sitting back there like I always do on Tuesday. And a lot of times the Lord just shows me things, you know. He'll show you all too. You just got to want it. Ask Him. He'll show you. He says in the Word. Show you things to come. Or show you things that you're questioning. And a lot of times, I don't, I don't want you to take this wrong, but I, I don't go to the Word or a book a lot of times I'll just go, oh, the Spirit, what's up with this? And then He'll reveal things to me, and then I go to the Word. Now, maybe that's backwards, but it's been working pretty good for me. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sitting back there, and uh, the, the, I shared this Thursday night in Bible study. And I, but I didn't know I was going to share it today. So anyway, I'm sitting back there, and we uh, all of a sudden I'm. It's not like an altar, not like you know what you would think. But Jesus is standing there, in front of me. But there's a gazillion people all around me. We're worshiping Jesus, okay, and. Now, I, this was strange because I've never seen this before. i seen Chris. i seen Beth. And i seen you, Daryl. Now, why? No idea. 
But that's the only ones that I really recognized. But yet, I knew y'all was there. I just knew it. You know what I mean? So, the, Jesus is beckoning to us. Come here. Come here. And all of us walk right into Jesus. Now, now hear me. Walked right into Jesus. In Christ, we live and move and have our being. Amen. And we're in Him. Amen? Amen? Now, if you can't get a picture of that in your head, you need to. That's all I'm going to I ain't going to say no more. You need to. You need to get a picture of yourself, your individual self, in Christ. However you can do that. Get that picture in your mind and never let it depart. Buzzy Sutherland, some of you may know him, he, uh, when he first got born again, he said he was in a room and he was standing there and Jesus appeared to him and walked right into him. And when he turned around, there was nobody there. Christ walked in to him. <coughs> the same thing is with us. We're in Christ. That's right. And... He's in us. Amen? Amen? All right. So we're all in there. And over, <laughs> over here, that's kind of do 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 do. <laughs> over here is, is this big energy source light, pure light. Now, in Christ, I could feel. Love. I didn't just know it. I could feel it. Everything about me felt love. Okay? But all Jesus and us moved into this light. Into this energy source. And in there, the only way I could say it was agape love. God the Father sent Jesus to save us. Okay? But we're in Christ in the Father. We never leave being in Christ. We sang a song. He never leaves us alone. We're always in Him, right? So what, what I have to do, what, what the church has to do is see that picture and know who we are. See, it's all about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Everything we need is in there. When He rose and sprinkled His blood on the mercy seat, it was done. Amen. Satan could no longer accuse you. He is not anything in your life. Only if you let Him. He has no authority. He was never given any authority because we don't have the authority to give that authority away. Does that make sense? Yes. But yet we've been taught and we have believed that that authority was lost and it never was. That's right. Never lost. God was still in control. Ah. Now, I want you to keep this vision in your mind. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Okay? We're all walking in, and we're walking into the Father. We're walking back out, and we're going each to his own sphere of influence. That's the only way I can think of it. We all go different ways. We all have different things that we do. But we're in Christ. We have been engrafted. We're there. He's, he's right here with me right now, or I wouldn't be able to do this. So everywhere we go in our sphere of influence, no matter what is going on around us, good, bad, indifferent, He's with us. We're in Him. 
and you were light. We're not the light, right. but the light lives in us. Right. And church, it is time for the body of Christ to stand up and say, no more. Right. We're sick of the way you are treating us. We're sick of the way that these you're doing things to us and to all people. It's time for you to stand up. We're in Christ. We cannot be defeated. Did you read the back of the book? That's right. <laughs> I did. I'm going to share something else with you. You don't like what's going on in our government? See, I'm not the pastor. I can say whatever I want to. I may not ever be asked to come up here again. But the Lord said, tell them. If you don't like what's going on in your world, change it. If you're not voting, you are agreeing with the enemy. I don't care what you think. I'm going to tell you something that happened to me. And boy, I got spanked. I was at work when I worked at the store. And we always had this Monday morning meeting of all the managers that come in, me and the produce manager and the deli and the meat and grocery and all, get in there. It was always, oh my gosh, sales were down. Da, 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 da. Da, da, how can we do this? How can we do that? And we all had to say something. And they come my turn, I didn't say nothing because I wasn't going to agree with them people. And we got up out of the meeting and the Lord said, do you know, because you said nothing, you agreed with every word that they said. Yes, sir. The word says, whose report will you believe? Uh, yeah. Now his report says that I am prosperous. That's Clay right. just said it. That's right. His word said that whatever my hands touch prospers. Amen. So I speak. I used to, I still speak. I got cucumbers and and all and gr green peppers and onions in my refrigerator. You'll not die and you'll live until I'm ready to use you. And that's what I used to do at the store. I'd walk in one time, let me share this with you. One t see, this is when you you're learning who you are in Christ. It's not my authority. It's his authority and because I'm in him I speak life, and life comes out. That's right. I speak doubt and unbelief, and what do you get? Doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief. Amen? Amen? You've heard this a thousand times, but the Lord is saying, wake up! Come on. Wake up! It don't have to be like this. I don't know if you all remember when the when head lettuce went to almost $5 a head. Now, this has been years ago. But head lettuce went almost to $5 a head. And me being a produce manager, head lettuce and bananas are a staple in the produce. If you get green bananas, oh, my goodness. Jimmy Bratcher wrote a song about it. You get overripe bananas, oh, my goodness. You hear about it. You ain't got no lettuce? You hear about it. The lettuce went to $5 a head. And I do the ordering. Got a machine. Back then we used to punch it in. Used to do it by hand on paper. But we got a machine. We punched it in. I put this thing on the phone. And it went. <laughs> it spoke a language. It went through the phone line. Went to the place where we get our stuff. And they send it to me. It's amazing. And all of a sudden, the truck came, and I get 35 cases of head lettuce. There's 24 heads in a box. $5 a head. I said, I did not order all this. Somebody goofed. I call them. They said, but Jeff, look at the numbers on your sheet. Well, I found out then that I needed bifocals. <laughs> I ordered the wrong 
punched in the wrong button. I wanted three and I ordered 35. And they don't take it back. They will not take it because they're trying to get rid of it too. So everybody is like, what are you going to do? What, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Now, I wasn't born again very long. But one thing I learned was what comes out of my mouth is what's going to happen in my life. So, and my helper, he was standing right there and I opened up that cooler door. We couldn't get nothing in there but lettuce. The apples and oranges and everything else was out in the warehouse. And I walked in there and I said, lettuce? You'll live and not die. You're sold in Jesus' name. And my guy back here is going, <laughs> Man, you screwed up. You goofed. Ten minutes later, I get a call. A restaurant ran out of head lettuce. They can't get none from the warehouse. Because they sent it all to me. <laughs> I said, how many cases you need? Three or four. Because they still make salads. Another restaurant called. Another restaurant called. Another restaurant called. Hardy's called. McDonald's called. All these people are calling. You got head lettuce? I got head lettuce. I got rid of every single case of head lettuce. And my, my buddy, my helper, never doubted me again. I told him this department will prosper. When people walk in here, there will be peace. And when he walked in my department, there was peace. Because I demanded it. It wasn't my authority, but I'm in Christ. And it was his authority. Amen? I'm going to read something here to go to John, and this is this is what the Lord shared with me this morning. I'm going to read all the amplified. Y'all there? Oh, seventeen. Y'all thought I was going to say head lettuce, didn't you, John? I'm going to read the last. Uh, per, uh, Scripture of 16, 33, 16, 33. I've told you these things so that in me you may ha have per perfect peace. And what's the next word? Confidence. In the world, you're going to have tribulation, trials, distress, and frustration. But be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident, certain, undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. So if I'm in Christ, and we are, all of us, the world can no longer harm us. Can't. Unless you allow it. Unless you... Now I'm not saying that we overthrow the government. I'm not go, saying that at all. But what I'm saying is, if you don't like what's going on in your sphere of influence, change it. All you, one time in, in uh, I don't know if Ron will remember this or not, but one time we were in prayer uh, before church. We have prayer, intercessory prayer in the morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, and right, I think right before we were getting ready to close, the Lord told me, He said, Jeff, turn the light on. And I shared that with, with the group that was back there because see, that light lives inside of us. Right. And all we have to do is turn it on. Right. See, it should be on. It is on all the time. But whether we're aware of it, the Lord's saying, be aware of the light that is in you. Because it's more powerful than anything going on in the world right now. It is so powerful, it raised Jesus from the dead. 
Amen? Amen. And when, 17, when Jesus had spoken these things, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify, glorify and exalt and honor and magnify your Son so that your Son may glorify and extol and honor and magnify you. Just as you have granted him power and authority over all flesh, all humankind, now glorify him so that he may give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life. It means to know, perceive, recognize, become acquainted with, and understand. That word know right there means having an intimate relationship with. You, the only true and real God, and likewise to know him, Jesus, as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. I have glorified you down here on the earth by completing the work you give me to do. Did you see that? It said completing the work that he had done to do. It's finished. And now, Father, glorify me along with yourself and restore me to such majesty and honor in your presence as I had with you before the world existed. He was there when creation was there. He created it. Doesn't John say nothing was created that wasn't created? He created something like that. <laughs> My words. I have magnified your name. I have revealed your very self, your real self, to the people whom you have given me out of the world. They're yours, and you give them to me, and they have obeyed and kept your word. Now, at last, they know and understand that all you have given me belongs to you, is really and truly yours. See, we're just stewards of this stuff. That's right. Amen? Yep. It ain't mine. That's right. That lettuce wasn't mine, but I was put in charge of it. It was up to me to get rid of it. Amen? Amen? For the uttered words that you gave me, I have given them, and they have received and accepted them, and have come to know, and positively and in reality, to believe with absolute assurance that I came forth from your presence, and they have believed and are convinced that you did send me. Now I'm praying for them. I'm not praying, requesting for the world, but for those you have given me, for they belong to you. And you are a part of that. That's right. All things that are mine are yours. And all things that are yours belong to me. And I am glorified in through them. They have done me honor. In them my glory is achieved. Didn't we sing something about that this morning? The glory. When... when when Jesus looks at us, uh, at us, he just smiles. Share a word with you that he gave me. I ain't done with my story back there yet. And now, I'm no more in the world. But these are still in the world, and I'm coming to you, Holy Father, keeping your name in the knowledge of yourself, those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Get that in your head. While I was with them, I kept and preserved them in your name, in the knowledge and worship of you. Those you have given me, I guarded and protected, and not one of them has perished or is lost, except the son of perdition, Judas Isaacariot, the one who is now doomed to destruction, destined to be lost, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I'm coming to you. I say these things while I'm still in the world so that my joy may be made full and complete and perfect in them. Isn't that one of the fruits of the Spirit? Joy? Yes. So why do we just look so gloomy sometimes? Why? Hey, I'm talking to me too. We got, yeah, that's right. Turn the light on. Ain't there a song that goes, stir it up, little darling, stir it up. And didn't, didn't Paul say, stir up that gift that's in you? Oh, well, we got to stir it up once in a while. <laughs> My
my delight fulfilled in them, and that my enjoyment may be perfected in their soul, own souls, and that they may have my gladness within them filling their hearts. I have given and delivered to them your word, message, and the world has hated them because they're not of the world. They don't belong to the world, just as I am not of the world. You ain't part of this. The kingdom of God is in me with all his power and might. That's right. I speak God's words and life comes out and situations must bow. That's right. The kingdom of God is in me with all his power and might. Amen. We used to sing that song a long time ago. I did not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you will keep, protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, worldly, belonging to the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them, we are. Purely concentrate, separate them for yourself. Take them whole, make them holy, we are. By the truth, your word is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And so for their sake and on their behalf, I sanctify, dedicate, consecrate myself, that they may also be sanctified, dedicated, consec consecrated, made holy in the truth. Those big words for this boy right here. <laughs> Neither for those these alone do I pray. It is not for their sake only that I make this request, but also for all those who will ever come to believe in, trust in, cling to, rely on me through their word, through their word and teaching. Doesn't it say that um, they live, it just left me, it'll come back, that they may be one, just as you, Father, are in me. Now, wasn't this what I just told you? That they may be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they may also be one in us. One Father, one Jesus, one Spirit, one. You and me are more brothers and sisters than we are anything else because of what Jesus did. And yet we bicker and fight and carry on and the Lord's saying, enough! You see empty chairs? I see him full. Amen. Faith sees. Yes. yes, sir. What are you seeing? The people who have left are coming back. That's right. And they're going to come back full of shame, guilt, with their tails between their legs. The Lord told me this. And he said, you are not to judge, but to love. Amen. Ask no questions. But love them. Amen. Amen? Amen. I and them, you and me, in order that they may become one and perfectly united. What's that say? Perfectly united. That the world may know and definitely recognize that you sent me and that you have loved them even as you have loved me. What's the world see when it sees the church? What does it see? I'm not going to answer that for you. You know what the world sees. That's why people don't want to come here. That's the way I didn't come. Y'all was a bunch of hypocrites. In here, you were perfect. You go out there, you don't tip. You didn't tip. You were rude to me in the produce department. That's right. When the holidays come, that's why I hated Christmas, Thanksgiving. I hated it. Because the same people who were the nice, friendly, became heathens on the holidays. Huh? Y'all still love me? Oh. Father, I desire that they also whom have entrusted to me as your gift to me may be with me where I am. As we live and move and have our being in Him, right? 
so that they may see my glory which you have given me, your love gift to me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. O just and righteous Father, although the world has not known you and has failed to recognize you and has never acknowledged you, I have known you continually. And these men understand, and women, know that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them and revealed your character and your very self, and I will continue to make you known that the love which you have bestowed upon me may be in them, felt in their hearts, and that I myself may be in them. Amen. Amen. So I'm sitting back there, and this is what the laughter show, show me all that. And this is the words that the Lord gave me. And he said, you tell them that I love you. You can do no wrong. I'm going to say that again because that just went pssst. Because you're looking at yourself. You're not seeing yourself in Christ. In Christ, you can do no wrong. Did he do wrong? Did Jesus do wrong? No. If you're in Christ, you could do no wrong. And he said, I'm coming soon. Be prepared. I'm going to... Okay. One more thing. I'm gonna, the Lord give me this. This is part of my notes, and I, I didn't know where to use it, but He just told me. Philemon 1 6, you know what that says? It says that we speak about this stuff that's in us, the goodness that's in us, health, righteousness. You know, another word for right, righteousness is right standing with God. But there's another word, if you dig deeper, and it means as it should be. And it means I'm full of health, as it should be. Amen. My finances are perfect, as it should be. I am the righteous. You are. We are. When I say want me, all of us yeah. are the righteousness of of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. And he told me, he said, we don't have to fix the darkness. Huh. We just have to turn the light on. Yep. 